In this video, I'm going to show you how to start projection mapping on your house. Just like there's more than one way to cook an egg, there's more than one way to projection map a house. I'll be going step by step through what I call the outline method. This method is for you if you're looking for the quickest and most straightforward way to map a house using free software. The bare minimum you're going to need is a projector, suitable cables, a laptop, a media player, a USB thumb drive, and a table. We'll be using free software from Digital Pressworks to outline our house. I've put the link below in the description. It's a lightweight, simple application that allows you to draw outlines on your house using your projector. If for some reason the Digital Pressworks software is not working for you, Windows users have an alternative software which can be downloaded for free from FX Projections, link below. But I'll be using Digital Pressworks software in this walkthrough. It's available for both Windows and Mac. Download the software, choosing the right one for your system. For me, that's Mac, but I'll also walk you through steps on a PC in a moment. On a Mac, locate the zip folder in your downloads, unzip it by double clicking. The installation process in Windows is much the same. Download the installation file, launch the installer in your downloads. You might see a security message asking for permission to install the software. The default settings will create a desktop icon so you can access the software easily in the future. Take your projector outside. I recommend using a short throw projector with at least three to three and a half thousand lumens, more if you have a dark house or lots of competing light. I'd recommend going with a reputable brand like Optoma, BenQ, ViewSonic, Epson, among others. Cheap off-brand projectors making big promises on lumens are unlikely to be bright enough to project on a house. If you want to know more about projectors, check out the dedicated video on projectors that's part of my house mapping beginner series. I also list some suitable projectors at the link in the description. I'm using an adjustable projector stand. I'll put the link to the product in the description, but you can simply sit your projector on a table. This is the bare minimum you need. If you wanted to leave your projector outside for the Halloween or Christmas season, for example, you will need to either buy or make a secure weatherproof enclosure. Make sure you have a long extension cord to run power to the projector while it's outside. Give yourself plenty of length to work with so you have flexibility to move the projector around. Turn the projector on and connect your projector up to your laptop in front of your house. The cables you will need to use depend on the inputs your projector accepts at the back and the outputs you have out of your laptop. Now you need to set up your display settings. First, let's set up our projector's display. Your projector's output needs to have a 16-9 aspect ratio. Look at your projector's manual to see how to check this. It will usually involve going into your settings menu and accessing the display settings. Now to set up the laptop display. On a Mac, come up to the control center and click screen mirroring, display preferences. If this interface changes in the future or yours looks different to mine, you can always access the display settings within system preferences, displays. Make sure your displays are mirrored. This means your projector will mirror whatever is on your laptop display. Make sure your display resolution is optimized for default display and that your resolution has a 16-9 ratio. Most commonly this will be 1920 by 1080, but it might be 1280 by 720 or 3840 by 2160 if you have a 4K projector, for example. For many Macs, this will result in a black bar at the top and bottom of your screen. This is normal. You will want to change these settings back once you've finished outlining your house. To set up your display on Windows, go to your display settings. These can be quickly accessed by right-clicking on the desktop. They are also accessible via Start, Settings, System, Displays. For the display resolution, set it to a 16-9 ratio. 
typically 1920 by 1080, but you could also use something like 1280 by 720 or 3840 by 2160. Under multiple displays, make sure duplicate is selected. Now your projector will output a duplicate of your laptop display. In other words, mirroring it. Back to Digital Pressworks software, time to open it up. Double click the application. On a Mac, you may get a warning message. In this case, you can open it either by going to your system preferences, security and privacy, and clicking open anyway. Or alternatively, you can hold down control when you single click the application and select open from the drop down. When you start the application, the whole screen will turn white. This is normal. On a Mac, to exit full screen at any time and get access to your toolbar and menu bar again, you can use escape on your keyboard. You can re-enter full screen on the menu bar under view. This doesn't work on a PC, so it's best to set aside time to do your outlines all in one go, because you won't be able to access your normal interface except by quitting the software. This can be done by right-clicking and choosing Quit for both PC and Mac. Because your projector is mirroring your screen, your projector should be emitting white light. It's easiest to see your projector's output if you turn off all other unnecessary yard lights at this point. This is the best time to check your projector's coverage on the house. Make sure you are hitting all the surfaces you want to project on with light and that nothing is being cut off at the sides. If your projected image is not large enough, move your projector further back. This is where a long extension cord comes in handy. But don't go further back than you need to. It's good to be as close to the house as possible while still getting the coverage you need. The closer the projector is to the house, the brighter the projections will appear and the sharper the image will look. Any light that doesn't fall on the house is wasted. You want the house to fill as much of the projector's resolution as possible. Try to find that sweet spot. I'm using a short throw projector with a throw ratio of 0.5. My house is around 12 meters wide, that's approximately 40 feet, and I've had to set up my projector around 6 meters away, that's approximately 20 feet. The most important thing to remember is that when you've found a good position for your projector and you make your outlines, you need to project from this exact position each time. If you move your projector to a different spot, you'll need to make your outlines again. You can use markers, maybe using tape or spray paint to help you find the position again in the future. Notice how I've had to tilt my projector down. This is very common and it's because many projector lenses are shifted so that they produce an image that is offset from the unit. Therefore, you need to tilt them to compensate for this. When you're happy with your projector's position, make sure your projector is focused. If your projector's lens can be zoomed in and out, make sure it is fully zoomed out. Also ensure that you haven't got any keystoning applied if your projector supports that function. Back to the software. You can draw a line by left-clicking and holding, then moving your cursor and releasing the click, creating a line between the two points. You can approximate a curved line by using a series of short lines. If you make a mistake, you can right click and choose undo from the drop down or using the shortcut shown. You can undo repeatedly. The crosshairs should help you locate your cursor on the house. The name of the game is to draw lines on all the major features of the structure. Things like windows, roof lines and other important architectural elements. Even though I'm drawing the lines in the software, I'm looking at the house to get visual feedback on how to move my cursor and where to make the lines. It takes a bit of getting used to, but you'll get the hang of it pretty quickly. You might find it more comfortable to use a mouse for this rather than the trackpad of your laptop. It can take a while depending on how detailed you want your outlines to be. I'd recommend not stressing over tiny little details just get the major things.
If you're getting a bit cold, I do have another tutorial for a way of doing this which is faster and uses a single photo of your house, but it requires you to use a few bits of software and some back and forth with your display settings. So if that sounds a bit daunting, you're better off sticking it out with this method. But if you're intrigued about the other method, I'll put a link in the description. This took me around 20 minutes, but I could have been a little bit more careful with it. What we've done is build up a picture of the house from your projector's point of view, using our lines. Yours will obviously look different to mine. Depending on the angle of the projector, it might look a bit strange and distorted, but that's normal. To save the image, right click anywhere on the screen and choose save from the dropdown. Now you have your outlines, you can design a show yourself or send the outlines to a designer who can customize a pre-made show to your house. If you are designing a show yourself, you can use software like DaVinci Resolve, which is free, or Adobe After Effects, which is subscription-based, to create a show over your guide. There are lots of free tutorials online for learning to use these programs. As for sourcing video content, I have a video where I share all my favourite video content resources, some free and some paid. I also sell a lot of the video content I use in my shows in my online store. When you're ready to project a show on your house, it's a good idea to put something in your windows to catch the projections, otherwise the light will go straight through. I use Static Cling Blackout Vinyl and I'll put a link in the description. You're unlikely to want to run your show off your laptop outside, so you'll want something else to send media to the projector. Some cheaper projectors can read media files straight off a USB drive plugged in the back, but many can't, so instead you'll need a media player. A media player is a little piece of hardware which is relatively inexpensive. I've put a link in the description to some suitable media players. I've loaded my USB thumb drive with the video file of my show and I'm plugging it into my media player. Then I'm connecting my media player to power and connecting it to my projector. Using the media player's remote, I can play the video file to start my show. So these are the basic steps to projecting on your house in the most straightforward way. If you'd like to learn about the other way of doing it, check out my orthographic method series. If you want to learn more about the whole DIY house mapping process, including figuring out if your house is suitable, projectors, building an enclosure, budget and more, check out my beginners series. Please leave a comment to say hi, and if this video helped you, please like it and subscribe. See you in the next video.